In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use Python scripting to make a simple input, process and output application in the Blender game engine. I will experiment with adding a cursor and I will show you how to format the output, change the layout to game logic, change Blender render to Blender game, press X to delete the cube, add text and zoom in with the mouse wheel. Click the object properties button and give the text object a more meaningful name. Input text, there will be an output text. Go into edit mode and set the initial value of the text to nothing, empty string and back into object mode. Add a text game property so that we can change the text. Add a keyboard sensor and click all keys so that it will send a signal when you press any key. Add a Python controller so that we can process the key that has been pressed. To start the Python script, I'm going to get a code snippet from the Blender website. Click the support button, click the Python API reference, scroll down to the game modules. We want the events module. There are three example blocks of code. I want the second one, highlight it. I only want one example if statement. Right click, copy, go into Blender. In the text editor window, click the new button, right click and paste. Scrolling down through the documentation, we see all the events we can respond to, mouse events, and the pressing of all the common keys on the keyboard. Converting miles to kilometers involves entering numbers. So the first event I'm going to respond to is the pressing of the zero key, right click copy, and in Blender, right click and paste. I renamed the keyboard sensor all, so I need to change that in the script. Input text is the owner of the Python controller. I need a link to the input text object. Own equals co is the current controller, the Python controller. The owner function returns a link to the owner object, the input text object. Now, as the user presses the keyboard keys, we can dynamically change the text. We need to change the text property, a custom property, the syntax is square brackets, single quote, name of the property, single quote, square bracket. Plus equals will add the character to the end of the string. As the user presses the zero key, we want to add the zero character to the end of the string. To see if it works, first I'm going to give the text file a meaningful name allkeys.py and link it to the Python controller. With the mouse pointer in the 3D view window, press P to play the game engine, press the zero key and the zero character is added to the input text object. Now I can copy and paste the if statement. Right click copy, right click paste so that if the user presses the one key, the digit one character is added to the string. I have jumped ahead and entered if statements for all the digits. Now we can enter any positive whole number. I'm going to add three more text objects. The first two will be labels, a prompt to enter the distance in miles, and a label for the distance in kilometers. The third text object will be the output text. I've jumped ahead and edited the first text object. To edit the second, go into edit mode. Distance in kilometers colon. Go into object mode and move that back. 
I'm going to set the initial value of the output text to empty string and back into object mode. How do we get the inputted data to the output text? Well, if we send a message from the input text using a message actuator to the output text, I'm going to put the subject of the message as enter pressed. And the data will be transferred in the body of the message in the property text. I should add another if statement for the enter key to activate the message actuator. But for simplicity, I'm going to add another keyboard sensor and press the enter key and connect those up. Select the output text and add a text game property. Add a message sensor and a Python controller. And the message to be listened for is enter pressed. We need a new script to process the message. I'm going to copy the first few lines of the all key script. Click the new text block button and paste. The comment should be changed. I'm going to delete it. And the name of the sensor should be message. I have jumped ahead and added the next line. If the sensor is a message sensor, then the body's function returns the data stored in the body of the message. I have jumped ahead and added the next line. Body will be an array. The miles data will be stored in the first element of the array. In the next line, the number of kilometers is calculated from the number of miles by multiplying by the conversion factor. But this line won't work because miles is a string, a string of characters, and Python will not automatically convert it into a number. So we have to add this line, which will convert the string into a floating point decimal number. To display the answer, the text property of the output text will be set equal to the kilometers. Give the script a meaningful name, enter.py, and link the controller to the script and connect the logic bricks up. Press P to start the game engine, and the application works, but the text does not render the same in the game engine as it does in the 3D view. To solve the problem, for the labels, convert them to mesh, Alt and C. Now when I press P to play, the labels render the same as they do in the 3D view. Notice that the distance in kilometers is displayed with six decimal places. I'm going to open the file I used at the beginning of the tutorial. In this version, the output is formatted. The percent means that what follows is format information, and it is to be replaced by the variable kilometers in the specified format. The F means a floating point number. The point one means display correct to one decimal place. And the first number is the total width of the number Pad it out with spaces if necessary. Going back to the file that I made in the tutorial, there are 10 if statements that add the digit corresponding to the key pressed. In the extended version of the program, a line is added to each if statement that deletes the cursor, then the digit is added, then the cursor is put back after the digit. The line of code that strips the cursor strips the last character of any string. The len function returns the length of a string. If the string is 10 characters, only the first nine will be copied back into the text. I went into edit mode to set the initial value of the text 
to the vertical line character to act as a cursor. I've added three more if statements, the full stop key that is used for the decimal point, the backspace delete key and the enter key. For the decimal point, the script is the same as for the numeric digits. The backspace delete checks that there is at least one character to delete. It then strips the last two characters, the cursor and the last digit, before putting the cursor back. When the enter key is pressed, the message actuator is activated. For the line to work, you have to add this line at the top. That's the end of the tutorial. I'll put the files used in the tutorial for you to download at my website. Click the link or the eye icon. If you'd like to subscribe, click the link or the stickman. Thanks for watching and goodbye.